these are my South Down sheep. This one's bow and this one's peep. Basically, in England um, for hundreds of years, traditionally um, people, peasant farmers and so on, didn't have very much land and uh, it was desirable for them to have a small breed of sheep. We have the um, traditional old English South Down sheep. Now in America they um, they know them as well some people know them as old English baby doll South Down sheep. Now in England this is the only South Down sheep breed as far as I know. There'll probably be a few cross breeds but in America they have one they call it the South Down but it's an American South Down because what happened is when the um, the British took uh, the South Down sheep to America they realized they had more land and they wanted uh, the sheep to be taller so they crossbred them which gave them longer legs but uh, these uh, these two little characters here these are um, uh, traditional British South Downs because they're so short they can go under bushes sort of like as I've got here on my property they will uh, do the weeding and so on they'll get under shrubs and clear out weeds so they do quite a good job if I just get up they're bound to follow me over come on girls and they will eat almost anything if I show you like that they'll eat leaves so when it comes to autumn when the leaves drop on the floor they eat the leaves in autumn they'll take them out your hand scoff them like that so they do a good weeding job they go around keep everything down so places where you wouldn't want to run a lawnmower where you've got stones and stuff like this um, there's no issue like the modern equivalent would be you use a strimmer and strim it down but of course you're not going to pick the grass up if you use a strimmer whereas a sheep will eat the grass um, there's also other good points about owning a sheep as opposed to say a dog because um, if you own a sheep they just consume uh, you know vegetation uh, vegetables they'll eat carrots they'll eat bananas they'll eat the banana peel they eat almost anything uh, but when it comes to owning a dog if you're going to feed a dog, you've got to kill another animal to feed a dog. Same goes with a cat, which I've got there. Um, pretty much the same issues as with a dog. Um, but I inherited the cat, so that's another story. Um, yeah, so these things don't require another animal to die in order for them to live. A dog does. Um, if you go into places like uh, Wales or Yorkshire, you will find these, um, your any sheep wandering around in the roads, and um, basically the cars are supposed to slow down and they drive over cattle grids in these areas so that the sheep don't wander off and go into the towns and go to pubs and things like that you know so uh, yeah so effectively they do have a little bit of road sense if cars are around they will get used to not wandering out in front of a car but as I'm here, 
in a busy town in Merseyside it's more sensible if you do need to walk them outside to give them a more varied an area then um, you're gonna have to put them on a rope you can see uh, sort of uh, getting on with my cat quite well um, yes so um, also I have a Land Rover and um, if you've got if you've got military vehicles and um, you're restoring them because military vehicles are generally quite tall sheep can actually get underneath them goats will chew just about anything if you've got exposed wiring um, and so on on uh, on a vehicle a goat will chew at it and destroy it whereas sheep are a little bit more sensible Um, they generally understand that um, chewing a piece of plastic it doesn't taste nice and, um, and generally they don't do it that's a south down sheep um, relatively a nice pet they're well mannered uh, particularly if you get one of the ewes on the girls uh, you can trim them you can give them fancy poodle cuts like they do in America if you uh, want to pay out for that or as I do I get them trimmed once a year and it costs me around 30 pound to have the two of them trimmed uh, in winter you're gonna have to feed them because the grass basically will die off in winter or it will slow down it won't grow as, as fast so they will need bales of hay which you can buy for about six pounds for a bale of hay and the last a uh, couple of weeks i find for the two of them i'll get about two weeks out of one bale for six pounds and basically top them up with whatever else you can get hold of if you go to a farmer's uh, farm suppliers you'll be able to buy hay um, and you'll be able to buy bags of carrots um, like a sack of carrots one pound eighty thereabouts and uh, that helps top up their diet Yes, something else I should say uh, is basically the waste that comes from these uh, sheep is bio waste. They're basically eating vegetation, so uh, the vegetation is carbon storage. Basically, that's what vegetation is. Um, all these trees, they all grow using carbon from the air and they produce the leaves and so on and all the wood and everything it's all carbon storage so uh, the same is with the grass the grass grows due to carbon in the air co2 basically so when it comes to the sheep they basically eat all the vegetation and they break it down into most of the time these little black pellets which you see there yeah I'm not going to handle them uh, but basically 
There you go. That is not rabbit poo, it's sheep poo. And uh, that is basically carbon storage also, just like it was in the plant. Once you um, would normally trim the plant, it would go off into the bin. But here, with the sheep, they process it, turn it into little pellets, which is carbon storage. So uh, unlike burning it on a fire and releasing it back into the atmosphere as uh, a CO2, you actually have it converted directly into carbon by the animal and it goes back on the land. You can, in some cases, sweep it up and you can put it into a bin as you would do with a dog, but unlike with a dog, um, sheep waste is fairly harmless. Um, if you have a dog, then you have to follow that dog around with plastic poo bags picking up their waste. Now, it then gets brought home if you're doing your job properly and you stick it into a non-recyclable bin and it goes into a landfill. Now, with a sheep, you don't have to send their waste off to go in a landfill, you can just put it on your own land. It is basically um, producing topsoil. It's a nutrient for your ground. It will break down in the sun and in the rain and it will just become normal soil. Uh, dog waste, alternatively, um, that is quite nasty stuff. Um, if if children get it in their eyes, it can blind them, probably do the same for adults. Um, so dog mess is a nasty stuff. It also smells very bad and you don't want it on your shoes when you're walking down the street. You could say the same sort of thing uh, about sheep droppings. You don't really want them on your shoes, but if you walk them on grass, outside and they make their mess on the grass it's, it just breaks down and it becomes a nutrient for the grass so it's not really harmful right this is how i take myself down sheep out for a walk using a car tow rope basically tow rope fastens around my waist here on this latch on this cliff and the other end goes round uh, Bo's neck. Bo's the one I'm using today. I'll take for a walk today. Got to try and make sure that the the rope stays round the neck, but not too tight, and allows her to get up and down and nibble the uh, the leaves around the walls. stays in there watching from the other side and starts to get jealous but that's the way it is she does a good weeding job I like the lavender leaves and the lavender flowers she come and get some grass, though. Come on, let's get some grass.
And the cat's joining me. See, they like to concentrate on eating all the weeds up first before just touching grass. Because the weeds are not supposed to be there after all, it may taste the nicest. Hard to get up when a sheep's pulling at you. 